Hey guys, so I gotta let you know that I did record this video the day before Shane Lemieux got injured on the second day of training camp. Uh, obviously, prayers go out to Shane Lemieux. I hope that it's nothing major. And if it's not and he does return, you can use this video to evaluate his strengths and weaknesses for this season. But if he doesn't return, you can use it for next season, of course. We will update you with his injury status on the main Fireside Giants uh you know, videos. But in this episode, I did go through his strengths and weaknesses, break him down. I did it all before I knew he was injured. So now keep that in mind as you watch this, that he does have this potential injury that we're monitoring right now. But also I do break down Zach Fulton in this video, who could potentially be his replacement. So that's in the second half of the video. So you could totally just go skip to that. If you don't really want to hear a breakdown on Shane Lemieux right now while he's injured, you can go listen to the breakdown on Zach Fulton, see what he might bring to the starting lineup potentially for the Giants. So without further ado, let's get in this video. Court is back in session. Welcome back to another episode of Tony's Takes presented by Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Tony Anthony underscore Rivardo on Twitter. Go check me out. And today we are hopping right back into our offensive line mini series, breaking down the strengths and weaknesses of all of the offensive linemen. I did the first three, which was Andrew Thomas, left tackle, uh, Will Hernandez, left slash right guard, and then center Nick Gates for this upcoming season. Now we're going to be hopping into the other guard position, which is Shane Lamar. Mew and Zach Fulton. I do see this as a competition. I know a lot of Giants fans don't really see it that way. A lot of them think Shane Lemieux has the position locked up, but I personally disagree. And honestly, here's my hot take for the 2021 season. I think that Zach Fulton should be one of the starting offensive guards this year. So let's get into Shane Lemieux. Let's break down his strengths, weaknesses, the biggest question that he has entering the season, the bottom line on Shane Lemieux, and then do the same thing for Zach Fulton, compare and contrast the two players as we get ready uh, for training camp, which has just begun, and of course, ultimately for preseason and the regular season of this year. So let's start off with Shane Lemieux, his strengths. Now, there aren't that many strengths based on Shane Lemieux's 2020 rookie season film. He struggled immensely that year. He was a fifth-round rookie that the Giants drafted out of Oregon in the 2020 NFL Draft. But there were some key takeaways that we can get from Shane Lemieux um, from college, from his past season, and kind of say, okay, maybe there's something there that we can develop, right? Now, his biggest strength to me is his athleticism. And I think that's what made him a better scheme fit than Will Hernandez last year because he is a better pulling guard in the run game. Jason Garrett loves running that power gap scheme. You'll see a lot of pulling guards in his running game. And Shane Lemieux is far better at that better at that than Will Hernandez. Will Hernandez is kind of your you at least he was kind of your slower, you know, pass protecting offensive guard. He wasn't really getting out in front of blocks and getting out in front of the running back and creating lanes downfield. But Shane Lemieux has that ability. He's much quicker than Will Hernandez off the line of scrimmage, or at least it's, it appears that way on the 2020 film. And I do believe that that athleticism that Shane Lemieux possesses is one of the main reasons that he was made the starter for the second half of the season over Will Hernandez. I understand Will Hernandez was struggling the first half of the year, and then he had COVID, and then he was also playing injured, so they just kind of shut him down for the next half of the year, kind of just rotated him in there, and made Shane Lemieux the full-time starter, and I do believe that's because they thought that Shane Lemieux was a better scheme fit. Now, he also is one of those tenacious mauler types, right? He is one of those big hog mollies that just loves to hit people. That's what you get with Shane Lemieux, you know, coming from Oregon, playing alongside Penny Sewell, who was one of the best offensive tackle prospects to come out in the last decade or two. Um, yeah, so Oregon really loves to make those hog mollies into some studs once they get to the NFL. Not sure if they did that exactly with Shane Lemieux, but they absolutely did breed a real you know, mauling type. So Shane Lemieux is kind of in the same vein as Nick Gates in a way, right? Nick Gates, we just discussed him in the last episode. He is that athletic pulling guard, pulling center, pulling offensive lineman, has that athleticism and is that mauler. He sees somebody um, fighting with his quarterback. He's going to put him on his ass. Nick Gates got into a fist fight with Aaron Donald, didn't care. He just wanted to knock somebody out, right? And I do kind of see the same thing with Shane Lemieux. He loves to stick up for his teammates and he loves to maul. He loves to be that run blocker. He pancake somebody, he's going to lay down on top of them and say, yeah, I got you, that kind of thing. 
And also, I think that one thing that Shane Lemieux has going for him, again, not based off of his 2020 film, because in my opinion, there wasn't much to like, but his offseason work ethic in this 2021 offseason has been phenomenal. He has worked all offseason on a hand placement, according to Giants Insider. Apparently, he's been really trying to improve his pass protection skills, which we're going to get into as his weaknesses. His biggest weakness is by far his pass protection, um, but his Hand placement was a big problem there, and I guess he's been working on that a lot this offseason trying to improve. Another thing, offseason work being a strength for Shane Lemieux because he didn't have any offseason work in 2020. Keep in mind, fifth round rookie out of Oregon gets injected into this team, this brand new team that has a brand new coaching staff. Everything here was new last year, but it also was new during a pandemic. So, they didn't have any training camp preseason, none of those in-person workouts that Shane Lemieux desperately needed. He didn't get any practice with the coaching staff really until the regular season began, which was a major difficult point for all of these rookies that came in. And I believe, you know, as we look ahead to this 2021 season, we can say, okay, the Giants do have their full coaching staff. They do have a new offensive line coach who should be far better than the last one. I believe in Rob Sale to be a much better coach than Mark Colombo was, but they also have an entire training camp and preseason to get these guys up to speed and coach them upright. And I think that Shane Lemieux is going to benefit from that completely. And another report said that he has been in the building before 6 a.m. during voluntary workouts. So Shane Lemieux clearly recognized that he wasn't so good last year. But he is working his ass off to get better for 2021. He's been in the building early in the morning, and he's been practicing hard, and he's been working on specific things that he struggled with last year. So that's really encouraging. That's what you love to see. And we talk about this a lot on this channel, about the mentality that players need to have. Shane Lemieux has the right mentality. He has the right mindset to want to get better. He's clearly done some film work. He's studied his game and recognized where his weaknesses are, and now he's working to make those weaknesses his strengths. So I think that's really important and could be a deciding factor going into next season in terms of whether or not he's able to turn things around and become a good football player. So now let's talk about his weaknesses, why I am so down on Shane Lemieux, and it's his pa pass protection, his pass protection, and his pass protection, right? Shane Lemieux was horrible as a pass protecting offensive guard last season. Um, he was the worst graded guard in pass blocking by Pro Football Focus with an overall grade of 16.9. 16.9, that's really bad. He allowed five sacks, 25 total pressures on only 281 opportunities, which is 8.9% of his opportunities he was allowing a pressure or a sack. Now that sack number might not be the highest, but that could be a result of Daniel Jones getting the ball out of, out of his hands pretty quickly. But that pressure number, 25 pressures on 281 opportunities, if you compare that to Will Hernandez, who also had 200, or had 25 pressures this past season, but he did it on 336 opportunities, right, which was 7.4%. Ideally, you want your offensive guard to be closer to around 4%. Shane Lemieux is at about 9%, and Hernandez wasn't good this past season either. We discussed that in his video. 7.4%, that's also horrible, but Will Hernandez, you know, he had a really good rookie season where he his pr pressure percentage was much better than that, and it was close to that three to four percent range. Shane Lemieux, can he get to that three to four percent range? I honestly don't know. I I think we'll get into that a little bit later, talking about his bottom line. But for me personally, there were some things that I saw on Shane Lemieux's tape and watched all season long that don't necessarily seem like they're going to be a quick fix. They don't necessarily seem like they are completely fixable. And one of those is his poor hand placement. I mean, the dude was just grasping at straws last year. He was struggling to get his hands on defen defensive linemen. He was struggling to anchor. He was struggling just all over the place in pass protection. It was really bad, and he was horrible in true pass sets. And a true pass sets is, that's snaps which an offensive lineman pass protects, specifically without play action, without rollouts, without screens, with more than a three-man rush, without that, and with between two and four seconds to throw the ball. This gives a more accurate picture of true pass protection. So it's basically those one-on-one -on -one blocks. Is Shane Lemieux winning those? No, he had 96 opportunities for a true passing set, and he allowed a 14 pressures on those 96 opportunities, which is 14.6%. Again, you want this to be underneath 5%, 15% nearly for Shane Lemieux. That is so bad that it's just catastrophic for an offense. That's why his pass blocking grade by PFF is under 20. That's why it's a 16.9, because 
true passing sets are really important for offensive line play. They're like the number one indicator of a good offensive lineman if you have good tr- true passing sets. And Shane Lemieux's true passing sets were the worst in the NFL by far. He was horrible in those one-on-one pass protecting blocking situations. And that's honestly why my biggest question for him is will he even start and will he be better if he does? Because we see all this stuff about him working really hard, and I, I give him all the kudos, all the respect for that, and I'm happy to see that, happy to read about that. But will he actually be better, and will he start? Because Shane Lemieux, he's currently projected to be the left guard this season, but that honestly could change. And we're going to get into Zach Fulton, newly signed veteran. He could make a push towards the starting lineup. And like I said, my hot take, I think that he will, and I think that he should start this year. It seems like there will be a camp battle between Fulton and Lemieux, But does Shane Lemieux have what it takes to win that starting job that he had last season? That's going to be the big question for Shane Lemieux going into the season. But bottom line for Shane Lemieux, Lemieux needs to be better. That's it. He has to be better. Simply put, Shane Lemieux needs to be better. He has yet to show that he is a good enough player to start in the NFL, yet he is our projected starter. So that's a pretty big problem, you know? And Lemieux was a good player in college and has flashed some solid traits as a run blocker in the NFL, particularly in that power gap scheme as a pulling blocker. But his struggles in pass protection seem too great to overcome, in my personal opinion. I think that there is a lot of issues that I see in pass protection for him that just can't be fixed. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I hope that I'm wrong. I hope he's able to fix those things and become a competent starter in the NFL. But it was so bad in pass protection this past season, I just don't know if he can fix it and actually get better. But anyway, let's talk about Zach Fulton now. And again, I want to end it somewhat on a positive note for Lemieux. He has been working really hard this offseason. And the Giants coaching staff does see some things that they like in him. And I do trust this coaching staff more than I've trusted any Giants coaching staff in a long time, particularly because of Joe the Judge, Joe Judge, right? So I do want to say that I think Shane Lemieux can turn it around. I'm just not sold that he will. But I am a little bit more sold on Zach Fulton being a solid starter. Zach Fulton, his strengths, well, let's go to number one, versatility. Okay, this guy started at right guard, left guard, and center for the Kansas City Chiefs. So he's kind of like Nick Gates in that way, where he has that key versatility that the Giants coaching staff really values, right? Nick Gates started at tackle in college, played some tackle for the Giants, then played some guard for the Giants, and now started a full season at center. Well, Zach Fulton has started guard on both sides of the line and center, and he also started at right guard for the Texans for three years straight. Now, I understand the Texans' offensive line was really bad for the past few years, and Zach Fulton might have been a cause of that this past season, but you can't deny the experience, the starting experience that he has. He started 46 games for Kansas City from 2014 to 2017. He started 44 games for Houston from 2018 to 2020. And really, throughout the entirety of his career, he's been a starter. But now he's projected to be a backup with the Giants, even though we have one of the worst offensive lines in football. That doesn't really make sense to me. Like, this guy is a starter in the NFL. Why are we all assuming he's going to be a backup for a Shane Lemieux for Will Hernandez this upcoming season. Like, this guy has started his entire career and had pretty good seasons in the past. He's had a couple of years that are pretty well graded through pro football focus, and most NFL, you know, analysts say that he was pretty good as a starting guard in the early stages of his career. Granted, his career grading numbers have kind of taken a tail dive, they've kind of taken a nose dive the past two, three seasons. But he has been about an average offensive guard throughout the entirety of his career, starting games for the Kansas City Chiefs, starting games for the Houston Texans. And so I'm a little confused why most Giants fans just assume he was signed to be a backup. Because when you look at his career, as a starter for the entirety of his career, it almost looks like he's still going to be a starter this upcoming season when you look at the competition on the on the roster. So I do think there's going to be a camp battle this year, and my money is on honestly on Zach Fulton to maybe even win that starting position. So again, one of his strengths, let's get back into his strengths, run blocking in 2020. Again, power gap scheme, Jason Garrett, he fits really well in that power gap scheme for Jason Garrett. 
he ran this, or the Houston Texans ran this a lot last season, and Zach Fulton did a good job. He ran it pretty well. He was a really solid backside pulling guard, and even on some of those opportunities where they have two pulling guards, Zach Fulton was clearing the way and doing a really good job as a pulling guard, as a run blocker. Now, I won't say that his pass protection was anything to write home about in 2020. Um, It wasn't good, but in years prior, from 2016 to 2019, it was pretty good. It graded pretty good, at least through Pro Football Focus. From 2016 to 2019, his PFF pass blocking grade was 77 plus every single year, which is super, super good. Like 77, that's like well above average from 2016 to 2019. So that's something to keep in mind with Zach Fulton that maybe in 2020 we saw signs of huge regression for him and we did see some games like this one against Jacksonville. He had seven pressures in one game in week nine of 2020, a 9.6 pass blocking grade that game, right? So we see signs of regression this past year, but in the years prior, we did see an above average pass blocking guard, a really solid starting offensive lineman. And now Giants fans are expecting him to be a backup again. I'm a, I'm a little confused as to where that's coming from. And that's why I'm saying his weakness, it was pass blocking in 2020. Um, he had how many pressures did he have this past season? Let's see. He had pressures allowed was he had 637 opportunities and he allowed 39 pressures in 2020 so 39 pressures and 11 sacks on 637 opportunities which is not a very good number and that's 6.1 percent of his opportunities but keep in mind that that 6.1 percent is far below the 8.9 percent that Shane Lemieux allowed. So on Shane Lemieux's 281 opportunities, he allowed a pressure on 9% of those, let's say. But for Zach Fulton, he allowed pressures on 6% of those. So even still, we're talking about how bad Zach Fulton was as a pass protector last year. He was better than Shane Lemieux. Now, the problem is when you look at the numbers for Zach Fulton, you see a lot of sacks, right? He did allow a lot of sacks. Let's see, 11 sacks last season, which was the highest number in the NFL. That is the worst pass blocking stat, you know, sacks allowed. That's the worst one, and he had the worst number out of any guard in the NFL. But one thing that I will say, if you take away his week nine performance against the Jacksonville Jaguars, where he allowed one sack and seven pressures, well, then you're talking about 10 sacks, and which is still a lot, but you're only talking about 32 pressures on the season, which is a pretty good number. I mean, all things considered. So I don't know. It seems like he had one disastrous performance that week, and the rest was about average for most of the season. But again, I am going to say we have seen signs of regression with Zach Fulton this 2020 season, because when you consider that 2016 to 19, his pass blocking grades were all really high and were really solid, and he wasn't allowing pressures at such an extreme rate. You know, he was allowing, let's see, um, in 2017, he allowed 12 pressures on 506 snaps. Now, that's a phenomenal number. Didn't allow a single sack that year. But 2020, he allowed 11 sacks and 39 pressures. See what I'm saying? He was a really good pass protecting guard, and now he's not a good pass protecting guard. So that's a sign of major regression, which might mean that maybe it's time for him to step into a backup role. But you also take a look at those previous seasons and say, okay, maybe the Houston Texans were just really bad. Maybe they had a horrible coaching staff, which we know that they did, and that whole coaching staff has been fired and replaced. So maybe he was a product of his environment, and it was causing him to be a worse player than he truly is. Maybe with a better coaching staff that the Giants, we think, have, and a new opportunity to start fresh, maybe he can bounce back and be a good pass-protecting guard again. That's what I hope, and that's what I'm going to be banking on more than I'm going to be banking on Shane Lemieux doing a complete 180 this upcoming season. That's me personally. I think that Zach Fulton has a better chance of being an above-average guard than Shane Lemieux has. And now I understand, Shane Lemieux is a young player. His ceiling is undoubtedly higher than Zach Fulton. He's 29 years old. He's a seven-year veteran. I get all of that. But still, we've seen good offensive line play from Zach Fulton. We have yet to see that from Shane Lemieux. That's just how I see it. So my biggest question for Shane Lemieux entering the 2021 season, or I mean, sorry, for Zach Fulton is, can Zach Fulton steal a starting guard position? This could be viewed as more of a question about Will Hernandez and Shane Lemieux, but it is also a fair question to ask about Zach Fulton himself because he does he have enough left in the tank at 29 years old? Is he having that regression that we were just talking about? Can he rebound in 2021 and steal a starting guard spot on the Giants? Because, again, we see signs of regression that maybe it's time for him to fall back into a backup role, but we also see signs 
that could say he is a better player and he is deserving of a starting job. So that's my big question. Can he steal one of those starting jobs? My bold prediction is hot take is that he should be the starting guard. Bold prediction is that at some point during the season, he will take over at one of the guard positions as a starter. I just don't see it. We have such a large question marks for both Lemieux and Hernandez. One of them probably is going to answer those questions and be a good player. The other one, you know, just logistically speaking, you know, playing the probability game, one of them is not going to have that turnaround that we're expecting. And that's where I think Zach Fulton comes in. I think the Giants did a really good job giving themselves some insurance with Zach Fulton. And bottom line on Zach Fulton kind of ties into that. Zach Fulton is an average run-of-the-mill interior offensive lineman. He is no elite player. At one point in his career, he was a really good pass protector. But overall... He's average. He's your average guard, and the Giants haven't had an average guard in how long? The Giants did not fix their offensive line when they signed Zach Fulton, but they did get a solid NFL veteran, something that the team is severely lacking on the offensive line. Everybody is super young on the offensive line. Fulton is a player that can guarantee you average offensive line play from his position, and that's something that the Giants have struggled to guarantee for themselves in years past. With such large question marks surrounding the Giants' two projected starting guards, it is entirely possible that the veteran Zach Fulton could steal one of those starting positions before season's end. And like I said, bold prediction, I think that he will end up starting some games for the Giants this year, and my hot take is that he should be a starter from day one this season. But that's just me. I'm really curious to know what your opinions are down in the comment section below. What do you think of Shane Lemieux, Zach Fulton, who should start, Who do you think has the higher ceiling and who do you think has the higher floor? Personally, yes, Shane Lemieux probably has the higher ceiling, but Zach Fulton's got the higher floor by far, in my opinion, and that's why I think that he should be the starting guard because this is a team that needs to put some stability in front of Daniel Jones, and I feel like Zach Fulton, being that in his past he was a really solid pass-protecting guard and being that he is still an average offensive lineman, the Giants need to get something average in front of Daniel Jones, guaranteed, because everything else is big question mark and has a chance to be really good or really bad. Zach Fulton, at least we know he's going to be somewhere in the middle of those two things, right? So that's my take on Zach Fulton, my take on Shane Lemieux. I don't think that he should be a starter. I don't think he's ready. I think one day he will be ready, but right now he doesn't look ready. He's got some problems. I really respect the fact that he's working really hard to fix those problems, but I'll believe it when I see it. That's kind of how I feel. So I'm, I'm excited to see his development, excited to see how he does in training camp preseason. And hopefully he does turn things around and prove me wrong and becomes a starter week one. But ultimately, I have big question marks on Shane Lemieux and I have less question marks or at least smaller question marks on Zach Fulton. Just think that maybe he's regressing into a slightly below average player, but that's still better than what Shane Lemieux gave us last season, unfortunately. But anyway... I hope Shane Lemieux turns it around. I think there's a chance that he does because he has been working his ass off, and I give him a lot of respect for that. So let me know, guys, in the comment section down below, who do you want to start at guard? Who do you want to start at left guard? Who do you want to start at right guard? Should Zach Fulton be one of those two starters? Let me know your opinions. I'd love to hear them. love to read them down below. And remember, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new, and ring the bell so you do not miss a video. There's plenty more Tony's takes coming out soon. A lot of Fireside Giants main episodes coming out soon, especially as we get through training camp, preseason, and into the regular season, the content is not going to stop. If we're uploading seven days a week right now, probably going to see at least 10 uploads a week this upcoming season. It's going to be grind time for us. We are really hyped to bring you guys some elite content this season. So please make sure that you tune in, make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss any of our uploads. And thank you again for tuning into this episode of Tony's Takes. The court is going to be adjourned in just a second, but I want to say thank you and go Giants.